Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Second Timothy chapter 2, another good verse. Good chapter to read. Thou, Timothy, therefore, my son, no, not a physical son, a son of the Lord, when you take part in somebody getting saved, listen to me, you become their father or mother, depending, you know, if you're a man or woman. Now, if you've got a child of God who's just been born again, and you leave that child to his own defenses, what kind of parent are you? Just want to throw that thought in there. You know, we're not supposed to go, oh, we got 400 people saved. We're supposed to get people saved with the gospel, and then we're supposed to train them up. That's important. Be strong, and you know, if they don't want to grow up, then they're a bastard child. May not even be saved. But if a person who truly gets saved, he will, he will want to learn more. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So you can be strong in grace. Paul would not have said it. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit to thy the same commit thou to faithful men who walk who shall be able to teach others also all right everything that you've heard of me i've been witness there are witness to it you've been part of it you are to be a teacher of teachers now when i said that this son somebody gets saved and god has used you for that glory you're supposed to teach him you're supposed to commit unto them everything that Paul is. Now, I'm not one of those Paul onlyism, but you're supposed to adapt to that newborn child of God everything that Paul is taught, because Paul is right into the Gentiles to Christians our conduct in the church. We are to raise those children up. Timothy's grown up. Okay, Timothy, when you take part of other children, you raise them up. You take care of according to what I've taught you. Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Ephesians, Colossians. The books we're studying about Paul. If we did what we were supposed to do, we would not need Bible colleges. The Bible proclaims that a, a man, a husband, is supposed to teach his wife. He's supposed to have the answers that his wife has about the Bible, not the pastor. If men would stand up and take the charge of the Bible and do what the Bible says, we would not have the conditions we are, and we would already have a revival. So we got Bible colleges, and most of them, 99% of them are foul. They don't even know which Bible to use. Commit them to faithful men. If the man's not faithful, he's not living right, he's not obeying, We've already been taught by Paul, we are not to have anything to do with it. We're to withdraw ourselves from them. When a man wants to be a spiritual retard, he does not want to grow. Okay, you're on your own then. Until you want to do right and grow, I'll, I'll come back and help you. But if you don't want to be faithful, I'm not doing nothing with you. I'm going to move on to somebody else. We don't waste our time. And the valuable commodities that God has given us for people who don't want to grow. 
That's what's in danger of the American public school system. They have wasted billions of dollars on a bunch of idiots who are not going to do anything with their lives. And yet the people who do want to learn and do want to seek something, we can't spend time with them because we've got a whole classroom of idiots. That's why homeschooling is so important. You can take a child, and if they know the, the subject, all right, go through it. But if they're struggling, stop and get it right, and then move on. Everybody's looking at masses of numbers. That's not the way of God. Individual. And who shall be able to teach others also. So you teach someone who is faithful, and then they will teach someone. I don't see any Bible colleges. I don't see no universities. And Paul came from the school of the Pharisees. I forget the name that he was under. And he does not promote schools. But yet he come from school. Interesting note. Thou therefore, uh, Timothy, endure hardness. Uh-oh. I don't want that. Did you just see what it said? As a Christian, there's going to be hardness. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We are called to be soldiers. We're to keep rank. We're not to be double-hearted. There used to be a guy where, where I grew up in New London. He had a sign in, in downtown, no war. Well, I know he is a Christian. Because I wore every time I put my armor on. Satan sees me getting buckled up and dressed up. The world sees it. Soldier is called to combat. He's called to fight. And you know how oddball we are as soldiers of Jesus Christ? The Bible says stand. You know in World War One, World War Two, if you stood on the battlefield, you're gone. You're dead. That's why they made trenches and foxholes. He that stood was there for the bullet. But we're called to stand and fight and there'll be hardness. I guarantee Joshua wasn't a, a wimp kind of slender kind of guy. I guarantee Moses was not a wimp. I guarantee. Anybody can go up and down that mountain and God be at least seven or eight times. Joshua only lost one battle, and that was because of one man's sin. Every else he won. Caleb, 85 years old, and I want that mountain. I'm going to kill those guys, those giants. And he did it. He proved to be a soldier of God, and we can do it. So we're called to fight. And the lesson here is going to... It's going and not want to quit. Endure. Soldiers live a hard life. Soldiers don't get the food that the people at home get. They don't get the kind of bed that the people back home get. They only get the shower like the people at home get. And yet they still fight. And they still honor the country that they're fighting. We're supposed to be honoring the country we're fighting. New Jerusalem. You thought I was going to say America, didn't you? You, knew, you? you haven't heard me enough. No man that warreth, well, where does that go back to? The good soldier. A good soldier warreth. Entangle himself with the affairs of this life, this world. You're a soldier of Jesus Christ. Get out of this world. Get out of the cares of this life. Get on with the gospel. Get on with teaching Christians. Get on doing right. Who cares about the baseball? Who cares about the entertainment? Who cares about what the world cares about? Stand up for Jesus. That's gone. That he, may, the soldier, he may please whom has chosen him to be a soldier. That's God. Jesus Christ. He is outfitted, as Paul said, with armor. Where were, where did you, we were just the other day somewhere. Because, because that verse is my, wife, is my wife's life verse. And where she was standing right behind her was a suit of armor. Must be at the flea market. And it's, 
And it's kind of funny because there she was, and there's the armor, and I'm thinking to myself, it ain't doing no good. Standing up on, on a pole or something. Ain't doing nobody no good. You got to have it on. And even that. Oh, look, I got, I got my suit of armor on. Well, what are you doing with it? Just stand in here. Ain't going to do you no good. You got to use it. You got to put it on and you got to use it. You got to stand and you got to fight. And you got to get out of the world. Because you know what the world wants you to do? The world wants you to take it off. Get naked. Get like us. Get comfortable. Get entertained. And God has called us to fight. The guy wrote me today, one, you know, God kills babies and all that. You know, I'm just, you're just stupid. But yes, God is the God of war against sin. And our, we have a war against sin. Telling those people they're sinners and where sin is going to lead them. Death and hell. Unless they repent. And if a man also strive for mastery. You want to be a master? You want the highest of all callings? You want the, the, re, the rewards? You want the medals? Yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Uh-oh. You're not going to get crowned at the judgment seat of Christ if you don't do what's right. So you can take your programs and your church events that are outside the Bible and don't think you're going to get crowned. You will not get crowned for doing worldly things, verse 4, in order in the name of Jesus Christ. When you're holding a non-Bible that you think is a Bible, it's not King James, it's a wet macaroni, it ain't going to do you no good. And when you got things that God has proclaimed that are wrong in the Bible, drinking to get the teenagers, oh, well, we got a Christian uh, uh, tattoo artist, oh, we got the worldly music for Jesus, oh, we got music, we got this, we're going to do this, we're going to entertain, you're not going to get crowned. You may find a lot of people think they're saved and they're not saved. But they're going to hear Jesus tell them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you, but I went to this church. I said this prayer. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. That's how Jesus sums that up. What you said, even though you think you are doing right, is iniquity. And then what you think that you did was proper for God, for that person to believe in a lie, God says it's called iniquity. We're going to be crowned if we do lawfully and right. Well, we're not under the law. Well, what do you do there? Lawfully. There are things that God has set as a guideline for us. He didn't say go sell magazines for the gospel of Jesus Christ. He didn't say go get bouncy houses for Jesus Christ. He didn't say go get them drunk for Jesus Christ. He said go preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what he said. I'm excited. The husbandman, that's a man that, plant, that plants uh, vegetation. That was Adam. Let's go back to the re original creation that God made man to be. Caring for, care for the animals. Mary thought he was the gardener. So a man that picks fruit, does that sound familiar? A man that takes care of animals. A shepherd, would that sound good to you? A man who does both animals and plants. How's that? And yet, offspring of men and animals is called fruit. Look at that. That labor is labor, 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 labor. It's not lazy. Labor. Must be first partaker of the fruits. If I could grow a tomato plant successfully, you guarantee that first tomato is mine. It said in, in Proverbs that the man that has the goat, he gets to drink the milk of the goat. That is his reward. A guy that has a vineyard has the right to say, I want of the vineyard. Boaz took part of the barley that everybody grew. So if we are laborers, husbandmen of fruits and of animals in the ministry, we are to take part and enjoy the labor, the people that, we, that we've been successful with, the people that God has given us to grow in. 
And if that animal strives off, you're supposed to go get them. If that plant shows sign of sickness or disease, you're supposed to take care of it. Consider what I say. Think about it. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Wow, look at that. Consider it. And after you consider it, after you gave it a thought, what I just said, then the Lord, then God will give you understanding. Understanding is your relationship to God. Knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is how to apply what you know. Understanding in the Bible is your relationship with God. How can God get the best out of your husbandry work? You can know how to take care of plants. You can know about sheep. Okay? Now, how does God get the credit? Understand it. Remember. We're always called to remember. That Jesus Christ of the seed of David, Jewish, Jewish king, was raised from the dead. According to my gospel, Christ died for our sins. Amen. Glory to God. He was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And I was just having a conversation with, with somebody, a friend on Facebook. We talked about the Roman Catholic Church. They'll say that here comes Easter time and Easter Bunny and Jesus came out of the grave. And my question is, if Jesus came out of the grave, why is he nailed 365 days on that cross behind the altar of the priest? I'll tell you why he's nailed there. Because if your God is nailed to that cross, you he can't do nothing in your life. You can only do it to him. You could take him and put him in a box and take him out and put him in a box and take him out and put him in a box. You are in control of that God. My God sits at the right hand of the Father right now, and he's to control me. Now, I can be stubborn. But what is the gospel? According to this whole chapter and this worldly church event today, it's the gospel. We're going to make treasure chests. We're going to have fun time. We're going to have more time of play time and food time than we're going to have Bible time. That's perversion. Yeah. If you're going to have a vacation Bible, you should have more Bible. Amen. Yes, I'm mad. Fools. Remember, Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my God. you got to have the resurrection. I grew up as a Roman Catholic. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what I've learned as a Catholic. For people who hear this as a Catholic, there's no resurrection of Jesus Christ. Not when he's nailed on a cross. Not when you celebrate eggs in the church house and out in the, out in the yard. It's not about the bunny. It's about Jesus. And if you don't teach the resurrection, you're not teaching the gospel. Listen, Calvary saved my soul from my sins. Jesus said, it is finished. I became a Christian by Jesus coming out of that grave alive and well. That signified, that certified, that sealed Jesus from all other gods. That he came out of the grave alive and and resurrected and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is alive among all men and gods. I am a Christian because of that empty tomb. Now when Jesus said it is finished, do you realize as far as salvation is finished, but yet the second coming, the millennium, and all the promises yet to be fulfilled by prophecy has not yet been fulfilled, and there is much, much greater Man, there is so much more God. And Paul says in his words, I can't even describe it. Jesus said you couldn't even handle it. So I'm going to preach about hell so you know where not to go. All right, because of the gospel. Ready? Ready? Now, this is why people will not do the truth. This is why they give in to the world and parents with children. Where I suffer trouble. When you preach the gospel, you're going to get people going to scream at you. You may be arrested. You may be burnt at a stake. You may not be invited to places. You will not be loved.
And if people say, oh, I'm so glad that you're doing what you're doing, let them stick around week after week after week, because then you're going to hit them eventually. Preaching the gospel calls for suffering. That's what God said. So we're going to do other things outside of what God says, and then you're wrong. As an evildoer, all right, let me sum up Jesus Christ. Pilate had him whipped and beaten. Pilate had him nailed to the cross, crucified. And yet the words of Pilate I state three times, four times, I find no fault in him. There's something wrong with that picture. Christ was ordered to the cross, yet the judge found no fault in him. There's the evildoer. Paul's on the stairs one day, and they're carrying him up, and he's like, aren't you that Ethiopian? No, I'm not that Ethiopian. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. Can I speak? You gave him license. You will be charged falsely for your belief. I can't believe they're lying about me. You can't believe you haven't read your Bible. Don't be surprised. If, even unto bonds, handcuffs, today, being tied to a stake to be burned alive, to be put into a knapsack and, with snakes and cats and thrown into the river. But the word of God is not bound. You're not going to tie the word of God. It's going to go. It's been over 2,000 years as far as the New Testament. As far as Jesus Christ from Matthew to Revelation. 2,000 years, it's still going. Even with man changing it, it's still going. The truth is, the King James is still there. And men hate only one Bible, the King James. Something wrong with that. The King James Bible also suffers. Because every new Bible comes out and attacks what Bible? The King James. So I guess the King James is the Word of God because the King James suffers. How's that? Therefore I, Paul, endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus, and eternal glory. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to get the bonds. I'm going to preach the gospel and do right and suffer for it for someone to get saved. Onassis ended up in jail one time with Paul and he got saved. Paul writes to one of his letters, Hi, how you doing? I'm in jail. But the whole house of Herod salutes you guys. The gospel got into the Roman authorities' house. Paul and Silas one night, they're in jail, and they're singing praises of God. They're glorifying God, and the jailer in his house gets saved. Do you want a revival in America? Then you need to suffer, because the only way the book of Acts, the Bible grew, and the word of God grew, is when people and Christians were suffering. Because people will look at your testimony and say, it must be real. When a man's about to go up to the guillotine and he tells the executioner, you put your hand on my heart. And if my heart is beating any faster than your heart is right now, you don't need to believe on my God. Now, I always wondered what happened to that executioner. God knows. Salvation of Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus. Nothing else. It's a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. That flesh, kill that flesh, put it in the grave. Now, I don't mean literally kill the flesh. I mean, that fleshy desires, the lust thereof, everything that goes against the Spirit of God, say, get out of here. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you getting me in trouble and looking filthy before God. Now get in that grave, shut up, and I'm going to let the Spirit run. 
That's one of our battles. It's telling this flesh, no. I'm sorry, but your program that say no to drugs is not working. You have wasted government money on that, where if you take money and profane the gospel to all the world, I know of people who've gotten off drugs and alcohol through the word of God. If we suffer, oh man, that's, isn't that just terrible? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. How's that for a promise? And it don't have to be a guy twisting your arm around your back or chopping off your head. It could be somebody walking up to you, and hey, you're stupid. Take it somewhere else. Thank you. You, 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 you. I'm suffering. And you are giving me a right to reign. Thank you. Now will you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ so you can do the same thing? Maron, thank you again. Peter and John in the book of Acts, when they were whipped for Jesus, they got out of there wiping their butt, saying, Yay, hey, man, glory to God. What are we going to do? Let's go back and preach some more. John was, was put into a boiling a, a, a liquid. I'm going to say liquid. I don't know what it was. I got to go look at it. And yet, and yet, what is the most mentioned book of the Bible, anybody were to mention any book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. There are more movies made about the book of Revelation than any book of the Bible, and that was by a man that suffered and put on exile because of the word of God, and that is the most, every preacher has to do a study on the book of Revelation in his church in his lifetime. Few would touch Acts in Hebrews, but Revelation and yet, that was, a, that was a disciple, apostle Jesus Christ that suffered. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Now, that's a, that's a colon. That's not a period. That's a period on top of a period. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And that's not salvation. That's not saying, Father, I don't know who he is. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, one of those Christians, I, I, I go Sunday morning, someone's done when it's not fishing. Uh, uh, you're going to be denied. What's the context of the verse? The rain. Denying Jesus Christ, don't think you're going to rain. Don't think you're going to have any authority in the, this, this earth under Jesus Christ in the millennium. You got to now listen, we all deny Jesus Christ. There's always that person that God says, go up to him and give him a gospel drink. No. You just denied Jesus. You just lost your eternal reward for that one soul. We all deny. Get that down to the fact. We all deny Jesus Christ many times in our lifetime. And the subject of verse 12 is not your salvation. It's the rain. If... We believe not. Yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Uh, you know what? I received Christ as my Savior, but you know what? I, I, I joined in a cult. It's no good. The Bible's lie. God, blah, 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 blah. It's not true. It's it's falsehood. I'm going to believe these people more than I'm going to believe. And the Bible says, you know what? You're still saved. Once saved, always saved. Even if you turn away from God and reject everything, you can't go to hell. If we believe not, believe. That's what it took for salvation. If you give up, yet he abides faithfully, he cannot deny himself. You are him and he is you, so you can't lose it. You just lose your, your reign. You just lose your crowns. We read about earlier, verse 5. You just go through glory miserable because you ain't got nothing to cast at Jesus. Of these things, put them in remembrance. Again, remember, remember, remember. Charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit. Timothy's a preacher. Preach this message to him, Timothy. 
And we saw in 1 Timothy all kinds of messages about the law, about rich people, and about the right to reign, and about not giving up and being a soldier. Timothy, these are great outlines. Use them. About words to no profit. Don't talk about stupid things. You don't need to get a laugh out of the congregation. You're to be serious when it comes to preaching the word of God. And baseball and all other junk, that's no profit to God. If you cannot get a reward for it at the judgment seat of Christ, if it has nothing to do with, with a crown or gold, silver, or precious stone, it is no profit. Shut up. Keep it quiet. Find something to talk about with God. Timothy, you have no business in your ministry mentioning words that God cannot use for those men that you're teaching to. But to the subverting of the hearers, you are to teach them what is right. You are not to unteach them of what God has for them to learn. Because if you unteach them, you are deceiving the people. You're either... You are either enhancing them for God or you are deceiving them for Satan. Ready? Study to show thyself approved unto God. Uh oh. How does God approve of what I'm doing? You better study. You better find out what God expects from you. You better find out that message and that event that you're doing is God approved by the Bible. We're going to have a dance out of our church. Have you studied the dances in the Bible? Especially before the golden calf? When the preacher came back from his, from, his, from his going off somewhere else and he came back and he found what his people were doing and the deacon of his church? Were they happy at the dance club there? No. A workman, a workman, a workman that, need, that needeth not to be ashamed. If you do not want to be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ, you do not want the world to put you ashamed rightfully, rightly dividing the word of truth. Again, it's about the word. Timothy, study the word. Find out what the word said. Don't go knocking on doors saying gather animals and build an ark. That ain't, that's in the Bible. But that's not today. Don't go say, don't eat this fruit. And there's many religions say, don't eat this food. That's not today. And when somebody brings into your church a doctrine, and you're not sure, study the word and find out what is it. Is it true or is it a lie? Charles Spurgeon said, the truth is like a lion. Whoever heard of defending a lion? Turn it loose, and it will defend itself. A lion does not need a lawyer. <laughs> he will defend himself as who he is, as a lion. And that's what the Word of God is. The Word of God is the Word of God. But you, as a man of God, you need to know what the Word of God truly is. You don't believe me? Then why are there many religions out there and people falling for them? Why is it every week when I preach the gospel... Nobody's coming out because they've never read the Bible. They never studied the Bible. They have not known what the Bible says to do. But their priest, their pastor, their preacher at their radio, whoever has told them something else. But shun profane and vain babblings. Babble, just words to be words of no use. For they will increase, it sounds good, doesn't it? Increase unto more ungodliness. A Christian, a man in the pulpit that just babbles, that's ungodliness. If you're going to babble, just get out of your position and find somebody else who can teach and preach. I was in one church like that. Three quarters of the service was music, and then one quarter babbling. Okay, we're done. Really? What would you say? What did we learn? I couldn't hear what you said. I didn't get the cotton out of my ears. 
And their word, their word, not the word of God, their word will eat as does a canker. A disease. Of whom is Hymalilius and Phaedas. Look at that. Paul names them. Paul gives the name. Who concerning the truth have erred. All right. Here's the truth of God, but these people erred. What is it? Saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrew the faith of some. What did these turkeys do? The rapture already happened. You missed it. And people went into convulsion. Oh my God, it happened? Yeah, it happened. I lost. I'm not. And sent a panic. And yet the scriptures show you, no, it did not happen yet. Because if it would be happened, why would Paul and Timothy still be there? Duh. Anybody think about that? Paul didn't go. Timothy's still there. You trying to say they were lost? Hymenaeus and Philetus, they were still there. So they were lost preaching a lost message. But look at the impact that this message had. No one was thinking. Nobody opened their Bible. No one cared to ask God. Oh my God, we missed it. They didn't have a Bible, but still, by this time, 66 AD, some of the letters are out. The word's gotten around. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standing sure. What would be the foundation we're talking about? It's the word. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Having this seal. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, if we compare Romans, I mean, Romans. We compare Paul with John. You remember about John talking about a book that sealed? This Interesting little fact there. People say, well, what's that book that's sealed? I wonder if that's a cross-reference. That sealed book would be the Bible. The Lord knows them that are his. You know that? Are you a Christian? Are you born again saved? Does your mom know it? Does your husband or wife know it? Does your parents know it? But what's more important? God knows it. The disciples went out and said, Jesus, man, the devils were subject to us. We healed all kinds of people. And Jesus said, hey, listen, hold on. You guys have a great time. Wonderful work. But you know what? Rejoice at the fact is your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And when your, your name is written in that book, God the Father, God the Creator, God of all gods, of gods to be God, Jehovah of the Bible knows you as your Father. How's that? And let everyone that, okay, right, names the name of Christ. How about Christian? I'm a Christian. Depart from iniquity. How many Christians do that? The name of Christ, that perfect name would be Christian. Antioch said, you know what you guys are like over there? You're a bunch of Christians. That meant for, uh, you know, that wasn't to be a pretty name. That was an insult as far as Antioch thought. But if you're going to put Christian at the end of your name, depart from iniquity. Because I'll tell you, you ask my family. We dealt with people and they'll say, you know what? I know a Christian one time. Thank you very much for the poor testimony. And the Bible tells you, if you're going to be a Christian, depart from the iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, clay, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Okay? There are all kinds of vessels. Silverware, pottery, honor. You bring out the best stuff for the best people that come over. Dishonor, the chamber pot. That's not so. Hey, everybody, like my chamber pot? Doesn't look good? 
You like my spit too? But they're useful utensils. They are needed. They were needed. Some places in the world are probably still needed. The bedpan. You know the bedpan not the bedpan, the, the 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 pan they use to heat the bed in the winter. Who would think anything like that? But they say that those things are collectible items because they were highly decorated. And all they was you put coal in it, hot coal, and you put it underneath the bed to keep you warm in the middle of the night. That's not something very important, but it had importance. It had its job. So there are people who are dishonored, and there are people who are honored, and there's all kinds of materials for people. If a man therefore purge himself of these, if you wash yourself, you clean yourself, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Listen. Listen to me. I'd rather be a bedpan for God than to be a silver cup found in the sewer. Hope you know what I mean. Hey God, I got this golden cup. It's filled with Ugh, there you go. God, I got this great china. I threw up on it, but... It, it. God, you know, I'm just a chamber pot. I, I, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I am sorry for my sin. I, I'm not the best of all the pottery in the house, but, you know, I'm just... I'm just a chamber pot. I'm clean. And God says, I like that. I can use you. Really, Lord? Yes, I can use you. The other stuff, man, it, it got to be clean. I can't use it. Icky. Sanctified. Set apart. Imagine God takes that chamber pot and says, look at that, everybody. He puts it right there with the china, the best china that's filthy. And look at that, guys. You should be like that chamber pot. But you're not. You're disgusting. He's not. And meat for the master's use. God can't use filth. He's holy. So what do you do with churches today when they're using worldly stuff for, for God? God's like, I can't do that. I can't use it. It's filthy. It's caca. And yet the person that does do right, the person that's seeking God, who's pleading the blood of Jesus Christ, the church will look at you and like, you, who are you? Who do you think you are? You ain't not like one of us. That won't work. Jesus never did that. And God's looking at you like, yeah, but you know what? He's clean and I can use him. He's, set, he's sanctified. He's ready and able. You're not. I can put you through the dishwasher. About, about 10 to 15 minutes before I can get to use you. I need somebody now. And meet for the master's use and prepare unto every good work. I guarantee a chamber pot could be, oh man, all of a sudden there's a, there's a leak in the roof. What's the only thing I got that I can use that's ready to be used? It's a chamber pot. All right, here you go. I'm going to update you to, you're going to collect the water from, from the roof. Look at that. You have now been upgraded. Flee also yeah, useful, youthful lust. Remember, he's talking to a young man. Greed, power, fame, muscles, girls, car, well, they didn't have cars, camels. But follow righteousness. Negative to positive. In order to get rid of a bad habit, fill it with something good. You got a sin that you want to get rid of, get rid of it and fill it with something righteous. Fill it with something good. You can't just remove a negative in your life and, okay, it's, there's a hole. There's a hole. I'm missing a toe. Well, my other toe is now creeping into the other toe. Now, something would have been there. A poor illustration. But follow righteousness. That is what is right. You find it by the word of God. Study it. Faith. Put your faith to the test when it comes to your laws, your sins. 
God, I know you'll take care of me because you are not pleased with what I'm doing. I am to the point. I am not pleased with what I'm doing. What do you think God's going to say? Well, don't use faith here. You think if you were to come to God and say, what I'm doing is unpleasing to you. Lord, right now, the best thing i got is my faith. You think God's going to turn that away? Absolutely not. Matter of fact, he may increase your faith. And you might say, wow, that was great. Charity. Use charity. Love for others. Peace. With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. How's that? There's the heart again. The heart that believeth unto salvation. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Where did Cain get his wife? Where did many animals run? Ah, blah, 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 blah. Knowing that they do, knowing that they do gender, grow, make, produce, strife. So a Christian has no business debating. An open debate. We're going to have a debate about the Bible. You just put the facts out there. They don't want to believe in it. That's, that's their problem. Don't argue with them. You just put the truth out there. The word of God. They don't like it. That's their problem. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, fight, argue, but be gentle. Some Christians like to have that be Gentile. You know, unsaved and wicked in the world, but L-E, not E-L. Unto all men, all men, apt to teach. You better be willing to teach, ready to teach. Look how many times we've seen that teaching in Timothy. Patient. I don't like that one. I don't like that word. In meekness, instructing, that's teaching. Those that oppose themselves, they fight with themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth. Somebody will fight against themselves, they'll just, and you teach the truth. You instruct them in the truth alone, the gospel, the word of God. And they may repent and get right in God. You didn't, you didn't put no false hopes out there. You didn't put no false words out there. You spoke the truth. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Now what kind of ministry you got when you lie to the people to get saved? You build that upon a lie. It ain't going to be too good. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Look at that. Who are taken captive by him at his will. Satan has a will to capture people. 2 Corinthians 4 4. And even for the Christian, if he falls away, if you go to him and preach the truth, that truth may, hey, you know what, I'm tired, I'm going to get right, and he can get away from Satan by the truth. Satan got away from Jesus, and how did Jesus do it? He preached the truth, the word of God. Satan tried to have the word of God, but he misquoted it, and he ended up the loser. 